the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon, or when is a Kickstarter not a Kickstarter? There you are, welcome back. This is the X1 Carbon from Bamboo Lab, a brand new machine that hits high marks on speed and quality and comes with quite an impressive feature set. There's a really good chance this isn't the first time you're seeing this machine because they sent this to many, many, many people. You've probably seen tweets showcasing how fast this machine prints, or, or you've seen Instagram posts showing you the quality of the models that this machine prints, or perhaps you've seen TikToks showing you how well it does multicolor 3D printing. People have been really excited about this, but it's also a Kickstarter 3D printer. Calm your jets, Turbo. Let's approach this with a level head. The X1 Carbon from Bamboo Lab sports a 256 cubed build volume. It actually comes with multiple removable build surfaces as well. Each one tailored to cold, hot, or engineering grade materials. It's a custom 0.4 millimeter nozzle and extrusion system in general. Everything's custom and it'll melt polymers up to 300 degrees C. The machine is fully enclosed with a glass door up front and a glass top, which can be removed. It also features, and I don't want to get this wrong, 16 color AMS, LiDAR enhanced intelligence, and active vibration cancellation. AMS, it's the automated multi-material system, and it's this box up here, and this tethered with up to three other boxes can provide up to 16 different materials or colors for 3D printing all at the same time. Right now though, all I have is the single one, which allows for four materials or four colors. And the only time I've ever seen 16 is in a photo on Twitter. The AMS is actually really easy to use and so far it's taken any rigid material I've thrown at it. When printing with multiple filaments, it does the purge at the back of the machine. There's this chute that the printer purges into and then it yeets that filament right out the back. The purge material can be significant, but everything that concerns that is configurable within the slicer. The LiDAR enhanced intelligence is to help level the bed to calibrate flow and extrusion and it helps with ensuring the first layer is stuck down okay. The X1 Carbon uses nozzle touch to level the bed and that LiDAR is actually going to make sure it got it right. There's a pattern that the X1 Carbon can print in the front left part of the build plate and the LiDAR is going to use those patterns to assist in flow and bed level. Once it prints those patterns in the lower left, it prints some really quick lines right in the front of the machine and it feels very similar to establishing a K value for linear advance in Marlin. Once a print has started and a first layer is laid down, the head moves over the bed back and forth to ensure that the first layer looks good. The active vibration cancellation is what allows the print head to move so darn fast. It vibrates X and Y and Z and it uses the information gathered in those vibrations to then cancel the vibrations during printing. This part really feels like how you calibrate input shaping for Clipper on those machines that run that. Uh, but I was told by Bamboo Lab, this is something they developed in-house. The first run experience was really interesting because I got it out of the box, I shoved some filament in, and I hit print. And 17 minutes later, a Benchy appeared. And this Benchy looks great. Now remember, to get this Benchy, I took it out of the box, I loaded filament, and I hit print. The machine did the rest. It has technology on board that would make some industrial level 3D printers super jealous. This Flexi Factory Frog is also a fantastic example of what this can do with multi-material and multi-color 3D printing. I loaded up, let's see, the Bamboo White PLA, some Nebula from Protopasta, some Quantum from Matter Hackers, and some Gray PLA from Atomic. All I did was shove material into the machine, I sliced this up in the slicer, and I hit print. And I got this frog, and it looks great. Oh, but I also got all of... All of this too. This is the purge material that it utilizes when it's doing multicolor 3D printing. Remember I told you 
that it has that chute in the back that it purges into and then it yeets it out the back. This is what appeared in the back of the machine. I really wasn't expecting this because this was, after all, the first print that I did multicolor, this frog. And when I looked in the back of the machine, I was taken aback just a little bit because the printer pooped a lot of filament pieces. Just know the AMS setting for purge per material can be controlled in the slicer. This is the default amount of purge and you can configure from this. This mini Joel was printed in Protoposs High 5 Blue on this machine and it took 55 minutes at a 0.16 millimeter layer height. Looks great. This Rose Dragon from Cinderwing 3D was printed using Polyalchemy Elixir filament and it looks okay. There are some problems on the model just because the speed at which it was printing and I didn't have the filament fully calibrated. But again, just doing some tests and this laid down perfect and every single segment and the legs, they all worked right off the build plate. I do have this really neat project coming up and so I thought I would throw it at the X1 Carbon from Bamboo. And these are all of the prints that I could do for this project in a 24 hour period. <laughs> this, this is mind blowing because the sheer amount of parts on the desk right now showcase, I think where this machine is attempting to really shine. And that's printing extremely fast at a high quality bar. If you look at these prints, they look great. And again, all of these, this entire pile of prints was printed in 24 hours. That's insane. Now I gotta put these away. Or do I? Now it hasn't been perfect the whole time. There have been problems that I've run into. When the machine is verifying that the first layer is correct, if it finds an issue, it doesn't really do anything about it. It does pop up a question on the screen up front and it gives you the option to either close that message or pause or stop the print job. The problem is it's detected something wrong with your first layer and it's popped up that message, but the printer is still just printing on as if nothing happened. This behavior makes absolutely zero sense because I'm not expected to stand over the machine to verify the first layer is correct for every print. That's the whole point of the AI automation of the X1 Carbon. You know, the printer could stop, it could beep, it could stop and beep. You're actually connected via an app and the cloud so it could throw a message to an app. It, you get a notice on your phone. Hey, the print job, something's wrong with it. And then, you know what it could do because it has that onboard camera that detected a failure. Why couldn't it then show a picture up front or right here on your device showing what you that failure is so that you actually have up-to-date information and can make the most informed decision about the print. The AMS up top has four lights that blink if you have up to four filaments loaded. And at one point I came up and one of the lights was blinking orange. I didn't know what to do. There, there's nothing here telling me any information and the screen up front, which has all of the AMS controls, wasn't telling me anything. And so I honestly had no idea what to do. Eventually I was able to yank the filament out of the machine and power cycle it more than once. And then I was back to good and, and running fine. But for some reason, something got clogged in the system and it notified me by orange. Oh yeah, don't forget, this is a Kickstarter. Well, I mean, it's not, it's not really a Kickstarter. Let me explain. Historically, Kickstarter was a place where startups could propose an idea and crowdfund that idea and get that money in to invest in the processes to produce and release that idea. It was like how angel funding works for startup companies. You, you get money in at the very beginning and it's a lot of risk, but if it pays off, you get a lot of reward and Kickstarter or companies that used it would give you that a lot of reward in the form of the product itself or a deep, deep discount. Fast forward to today and for the most part, at least with 3D printers, Kickstarter is used more for promotion and name recognition than it is for acquiring the cash needed to get processes and procedures built out to produce product. I wanna make sure I get this part right because Bamboo actually has money. In January, IDG Capital invested into Bamboo Lab and actually on May 28th, 
uh, Mingxi Investment made a strategic investment into Bamboo Lab. And this is all public information on Baidu. And my guess is all of that VC cash that Bamboo Lab has is what's allowing them to start shipping Kickstarter rewards in July. July. The Kickstarter runs the month of June, and unlike most Kickstarters, they're shipping right after the Kickstarter ends. My main, main, main concern here is with Kickstarter, you have zero protections for your money. Zero. If for some reason Bamboo Lab doesn't deliver or something goes wrong in the process, you get nothing. You get nothing. Your money is gone. You get nothing. Yes, Bamboo Lab does seem to have all of its ducks in a row, at least from the information that I've heard and can find. And it doesn't feel like this is going to be another Obsidian or Tico or Ivy or Buccaneer. But <laughs> there's always the chance, which is why you should never, ever put money into a Kickstarter you cannot afford to set on fire. I'm yelling because this is important. Having said all of that, it seems the issues that I've experienced with this X1 Carbon are minimal and most likely can be addressed with future firmware updates and slicer software updates. The hardware is super polished and I would imagine this is near final, if not final. With a machine like the X1 Carbon, it's super advanced. It also means it has all sorts of custom widgets and doohickeys that enable it to do all this really cool stuff. And we just, we don't know how Bamboo Lab is going to warranty these things or how they're gonna support these things. If you take anything from this episode, just there are lots and lots of reasons to be really excited for what this 3D printer can do and what it means for the consumer 3D printing industry, but at the same time, you really need to temper your expectations until Bamboo Lab fulfills Kickstarter pledges. Full stop. Having said all this, I personally believe that this Kickstarter will succeed and that I'm going to get the machine that I pledge for. This is not an endorsement for Kickstarter and in no way, shape or form am I telling you to support this Kickstarter. Please do your own research to determine if this is right for you. I'm telling you this right now for transparency. Plus, it'll be really cool to see what pledge machine does versus what this machine does. Well, there you go. That's my first look at the X1 Carbon from Bamboo Lab. And that's my take on the Kickstarter. The Kickstarter does run the month of June though, and I do have this machine. Uh, I can't guarantee that this machine is gonna get what you get if you pledge and it succeeds, but still, I mean, I've got the machine. Are there any specific prints that you'd like to see run, or do you have specific questions on the machine that I could answer that might help influence your decision, yay or nay, for supporting the Kickstarter? Let me know in the comments. I'll try to get to them. Uh, I'm gonna be printing with this thing as much as I can while I'm in town. If you pledge for the Kickstarter, I wish you the best of luck. If you made this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Fight for a cause you believe in. Print all the things. And as always, high five.